Good morning. So today we're going to talk about filming. After paragliding is probably my favorite subject. I'm going to run through all of my gear. You get an idea of what I use for filming and give you some uh, ideas and some tips about what kind of gear to use if you're trying to get good footage para making a paragliding film or filming air to air. We'll look at the different options and I'll give you the best all round solution at the end. So stick around. So this, uh, this segment has really been inspired and been made possible by our patrons. So thanks so much guys. We've uh, gone past 50 patrons now, so we've got a lot of support. It's really cool having you guys helping us. And uh, I just got this from one of our patrons, Yarek of TriFly. Uh, he sent me this in the post. Let's see what it is. Ooh. Check it out that my man is awesome oh, it fly. very nice and sleek isn't it <laughs> thanks Yarek that's very cool you can get many action cameras these days you can make a film with any one of them particularly if you set up your camera nicely before and you get nice shots from the ground you don't have to be too fussy what you get if you've got the budget gopro hero 7 it's well worth it um, this gives you an advantage because it's got very good stabilization just for the small movement doesn't help really if you do this with the camera but if you're just kind of holding it and you're trying to keep it steady, the, the stabilization is adequate. So that's a good choice for paragliding action filming. Um, the other ones you can look at, the Sony X3000. I haven't used it, but I've seen what it can do. Um, and that's also got stabilization built in. That's pretty good. Um, the other action cameras, the cheaper ones, the GoPro clones, they don't have the stabilization to the same degree and that's a big deal when you're flying. The other way that you can go is to get yourself something like this. This is the Insta360 one and it's a 360 camera and what it does is it's got two lenses. These lenses film more than 180 degrees, about 200 degrees on either side. So it, it's filming absolutely everything around this camera. It records everything while you're flying all around you. And when you come after flying, you download your footage, you can then direct in the software where you want the camera to look. So it adds quite a lot of editing time afterwards. And I wouldn't recommend it if it wasn't so damn good for, for paragliding footage just for our particular usage and I'll explain a little bit more but the image that you get is not going to be as sharp as you're going to get on a on a GoPro like this you're going to get a much sharper image on this one but this one means that you don't while you're flying you don't have to do anything um, and that's a big deal because you you might think you've got a lot of free time and a lot of ability to move the camera around while you're sitting at a desk watching a video when you actually get up and you're flying and you're trying to control that gopro you'll find that you've you know half of your brain is going to be used for the gopro it leaves half a brain to do all the other stuff that you should be doing um, which isn't good whereas this thing what i normally do is i just stick it out on a pole you started recording you stick it out there it records everything and you can switch it off very easily leave it, come to another section of good flying, switch it on again, record another two or three minutes, switch it off. And then at the end of the day, you're gonna get some footage that's very unique in angle. And you can direct the camera exactly to where the action is. The guy that came past you, the, the mid-air collision that happened, you can turn the camera to show you that piece of footage. So it's very powerful. Um, the other thing that it does incredibly well is it keeps everything absolutely rock solid. You don't get better stabilization than you do from a 360 camera. Because it's got the whole image to play with, it can move 
the, the, the recorded footage to keep it absolutely level and centered. So you're going to get footage that's going to look really, really good, but you're going to need the time to edit. So, you know, it's not something that you can just push and then look at your footage afterwards and put it on the internet. It's, it's going to require some work, but if you're into making a good film about paragliding, I would definitely recommend the 360 camera. I choose this for everything that I can film with the GoPro, and I throw this in for extra spice and for interest and for some angles where you just need the 360 camera. What it does fantastically is because it knows where the bottom of this camera is and it's got these two images, in the overlap it can stitch together and hide this pole. So you get this brilliant floating view where you can't see that I'm holding a pole out of the camera on the end. The GoPro usually comes like this when you get it in the box. It's got a little clip mount and you could, you could use it handheld. It's actually good enough now with the stabilization that you can use it. You could actually hold it like that if you're filming on, on the launch site. You can hold it just like that. You can also hold it like this. Oh, that's really good. It gives you a very stable shot because you can keep your head nice and stable. So on the ground, I'd actually recommend that for your filming because you're going to be looking exactly where you turn your head. It's tempting to just, you know, record everything like this, you know, holding it in your hand. And because it's got stabilization now, it's not too bad. But really, it's a lot, lot better if you can have the camera on a tripod. Okay, you're tied to the pole, but the tripod will do the same thing. So I can set my camera up here on the post with this little flexible tripod. I can click it in here on the top, and now you can talk to the camera comfortably and you don't get a shaky shot. So this little tripod here, it's a very good idea. This is a nice sturdy one, it's got pretty strong legs and most importantly it's got a ball that isn't going to pop out easily. So you can adjust it but you can lock it down and it won't come off. So get a tripod. So I usually do most of my filming with this. This is my handheld rig because this is so versatile. I can stick it on here, I can do some ground handling, I can pick it up, I can move it around. You can talk to yourself, you can put it on the end like that, and you can use it like a selfie stick. Once you get into the air, this is what happens with all GoPros. Helmet mount. You want to try and put the helmet mount towards the front of your helmet so that you get the camera slightly off the top here. This is the exposed position where it's very easy to catch lines. Slightly further forward you can duck your head slightly and, and avoid most of that line catching. So it's slightly better being in a forward position and I've set it up so that I just pull it all the way back and I lock it off there and now when I'm flying I know this is my head position if you look here it should be reasonably level so now I know when I'm looking I'm actually going to get to the horizon if I'm moving my head like that so you want to set it up like that so that you don't have a different angle every time and then you miss the shot that you think you're getting the way to have it is to have one touch recording on as well so that when it's here I can just go like that one two three now it's recording now I can film what I'm looking at 
there's some shots which are, this is great for, um, particularly when you're looking at things with your hands and you're fiddling with your equipment on the ground, you get really nice um, angle that's looking exactly, you don't have to angle the camera. But to be honest, when you're flying, this is terrible because you really should be as a pilot, you should be like this. Okay, the whole time you should be looking like this. And if you aren't, you're a bit of a hazard. To get nice footage out of this, you've got to sit up in your harness so that the risers are pushing against your shoulders. Maybe even hold on to the risers and imagine that your neck is in a, a neck brace. So you stop this motion. You have to go locked like that. And then you have to do all of your movements really slowly. You've got to try and turn, like if you're trying to follow a pilot, I'm doing that. And even there, I'm getting a little bit of a uh, 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 with my head. You have to try and keep it really smooth. So you get reasonable clips from this. And that's the way I film with the head camera. Is to make sure that you've got something interesting coming up. There's a beautiful uh, waterfall you're going past. There's a glider coming towards you. You're just about to launch. Something interesting is happening. You record that bit and you switch it off again. You save your battery power that way. You also save yourself a hell of a lot of time in editing. Um, this you could definitely get clips from, but this isn't my favorite position. Um, it's a good beginner position. Um, with you know it's less faff push the button you can record but don't expect to get fantastic results from it you'll get some usable footage you get a lot of shaky stuff and a lot of stuff you got to cut out This is what I'm filming reviews and everything with now. I'm not using any other equipment because it's light and it gives me something to grip hold of. I can film somebody flying past me like that in the air and it gives you so much more freedom to be able to film wherever you want to, wherever you and around the harness. You don't have risers in the way and you can get behind you and get around the side. So this is how I film. Here's my little DIY add-on, it's cost you about one quid on eBay. It's a little bubble spirit level. So you can look at the camera like this and you can see instantly when you've got the horizon level. And if you keep it reasonably close to that point, it's gonna do a wonderful job of keeping the shake out of the shot. But I'm sure you're asking, how do I fly the glider? I've got both brakes in one hand. So instead of flying two hands like this, I'll put them together. If I want to turn that way, I pull like this. If I want to turn that way, I pull like this. So I'm controlling the pitch, doing all my active flying, my left and right inputs with this hand. It's a little bit advanced. It does take a bit of time to practice and get used to doing that. And it's definitely not something you want to do in traffic for the first time. <laughs> you want to learn, take your time, play around. Um, I'm not recommending that you fly like that. I'm just explaining how I do it for filming. Um, it does require pretty good paragliding, uh, active flying skills and pretty good glider control skills to be able to do that. Um, I'm doing this part without thinking. It's like driving a car for me. So this hand just, I can fly the glider and thermal and do whatever. I'm concentrating on this side, on where the camera's pointed and who my framing and how close I am to them. I'm controlling my distance and I'm also using my speed bar to speed up and slow down. So 
that's what I, I do to get the good footage. And if you're frustrated by the footage you're getting, I, I quite um, appreciate that when you lock the camera onto your helmet or somewhere else, it's going to be limited what you can get in the air. The air to air stuff is the hardest. The other option that you've got is to use a pole. Um, you can put a GoPro out on a pole, but really the best camera for the pole is a 360 camera. And there's one shot that works really, really well. It's just hooked in underneath my chest strap here, where my reserve is sitting, my, the front of my pod. It's balanced on my shoulder, and the camera's pole sitting behind me like that. Honestly, it's not tied on. I don't do anything else. It's so light and so easy to use this thing that I just drop it in like that and I leave it. And it gives a beautiful chase angle. You can stick it in any other direction you want to. You can put it in your harness across the side like that and leave it up there. It's so light and so easy to use this that, you know, you can just, <laughs> just put it in anywhere, leave it across like that and get another angle. But most of the time, that's fine. You know, and then it's behind you and you've got this lovely following footage. And you can slide the pole in, put it away when it's finished and carry on flying. You might have seen the pros using this. This is a gimbal. It's going to take me a moment to set it up. There it lies the first rub. But with a gimbal, you've got a little mechanical gyro set that is stabilizing the camera movement. So if you switch it on, it will level the camera out. And now it's keeping it absolutely level. Now, if I move the camera, I move the pole left and right, I move it backwards and forwards, and I try and yaw, you can see the camera is locked. It's really, really locked. Now, this is really, really good. It gives you fantastic footage when it works. But I found these things on the ground, you can get beautiful footage. So it's a real good tool for a filmmaker. In the air, no matter how many of these I've tried with different versions, practically it's too fiddly in the air. It's difficult, I mean, it's obviously one-handed operation again. So you're flying like this and you're using the gimbal. Now you've got to try and use this button here. There's a little button there. You see now it's pointing back at me and it's giving me a selfie angle I didn't want. So now I'm trying to get it back to you. And I think something else, lock. See what I mean? So now I switch it off. Gah! I'm missing the shot, turn it around, switch it back on again. Let it stabilize itself, wake up. Okay, so now we've got what we want. So now two taps on that. Ah, okay, now this is the mode that I use. So now I'm I can tip and I can follow the glider as it comes past me. But practically, this is delicate, it's fiddly, and I've got so frustrated using the gimbal. I don't recommend it for air to air unless you're an absolute pro at what you're doing and you're good at flying one-handed. There is an alternative to the gimbal, which I've just come across. And it's an incredibly clever little piece of kit. 
Stead XP. The Stead XP plugs into the back of the GoPro Hero 4. That's the one that's filming now. It don't work on the 7, unfortunately. 6 or 5. The funny thing is, I've been comparing the footage between the 7 and the 4, and they're actually very, very close. If you play with the color and the contrast, it's actually just a lot of image tuning, tweaking software stuff that they've done with the image. But out of that Hero 4, if you're filming on 4K, you can get very, very good footage, very, very close to the 7, with the exception of the stabilization. But this thing records all motion. It's got little gyro sensors inside it, and it records the motion. And it comes back in the software, and it just takes out that motion. Every bit of motion that this had, it just take minuses it on the footage, and you get rock-solid footage, and I've been very impressed. Um, better than the Hero 7 with its stabilizers on, the Stead XP and the Hero 4, for air-to-air -air filming. So that's another solution, but that's a pro solution. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for somebody starting filming. Um, your best solution, if you're just starting filming, is to get the Hero 7, which is going to do all of that stabilization for you. And it's going to give you a fairly good result. It's not quite as good as it could be with a Stead XP. Um, but if you're a pro and you're wanting to get absolutely beautiful, horizon locked, beautiful footage with smooth panning and not the slightly jerky GoPro stabilization, Stead XP is the thing to look into. It's well worth playing around with. Very impressive. Right, so that only leaves one camera setup, which is the chase cam. The chase cam, as it sounds, is something quite scary chasing you. Um, you, you basically, you hang your, your GoPro on a line behind the paraglider, and you have something that drags in the wind so it stays back. I would say that's probably the most risky thing that I've ever done with paragliding is to have a chase cam hanging on a line behind me. If you have any kind of major asymmetric and some, you know, some major turbulence that hits you, there is a chance that that thing can fly through the lines and back out again. And that'll be a tangle that you just can't get out. Might not be very dangerous, but it might be a big problem because it's a free floating weight on a line behind your paraglider. So I don't like them, they make me very nervous. There are some good designs that uh, keep the camera fairly well positioned behind you. But the footage is always tipping and all the DIY solutions I've seen with coke bottles and things, horrendous tippy tippy footage. This will help slightly, this GoPro Hero 7, it will make the footage better. Um, the Stead XP would make it even better. So that's a much better solution, Hero 4 and Stead XP. Um, but I'm gonna say the best footage that, I, that I've seen with the Chase camera, 360 camera, shuttlecock, and a piece of string. The, having said that, this is the, the, the most stable, smooth footage I've got from a Chase camera. The resolution wasn't quite high enough on this Insta360 one, for my liking. Um, if you're viewing on a, on a mobile phone at the end of the day, not a problem, it looks really good. Um, but I'd, I'd recommend getting the latest model, the Insta One X, which gives you better resolution for that chase cam footage. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's all the gear that I use. I'm sure that's given you a good idea of how complicated it can get and uh, maybe a good idea of what camera setup you'd like to look into. Um, as I said in summary, this is probably the best setup you can get. GoPro Hero 7, tripod, play around with a helmet mount but bear in mind you're going to get clips. See if you can if you can learn to operate the camera in the air but not really recommended unless you're an advanced pilot. And Definitely look into getting a 360 camera and spending some time learning how to edit it so that you get hands-free, really interesting immersive footage 
from the 360 camera. Cool, so I hope that's helped you form a picture of what the camera gear is about. Of course, I could do a hell of a lot more about filmmaking. That's just about the equipment. There's still how to use it in the air. Um, there's making a script, how to write a story, to tell a story with paragliding. Um, there's the audio um, and music and production. Um, so a lot more stuff that I could do with filmmaking. Um, if you'd like to see that sort of content, join us over on Patreon. Support us there. It'll help us get an idea that you're really into the Flybubble channel growing and into filmmaking. Um, and you can drop us a message there and we'll definitely pick up your ideas and produce more in this series. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I hope this has helped you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.